Allah could have said he will give the sinners based on their sins because of their sins and he will pay the excellers because of their excellence but he didn't do that so there are two things missing he pays the sinners their pay he didn't say the pay is missing but what 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 Allah hasn't mentioned is he mentioned why they're being given the pay but he's not mentioning their pay itself but with the believers he's not mentioning why he's paying them but he's only mentioning the payment okay so there's two things the reason and the payment with the sinners Allah mentions the reason but he doesn't mention the payment with the believers he mentions the payment but he doesn't mention the reason and this is an incredible rahmah of Allah it's an incredible rahmah of Allah Allah did not describe punishment for the sinner Allah only described their deeds because that way even if they're sinning right now they can stop sinning and focus on their deeds and not tell themselves well I'm just going to get punished he took away the punishment from the ayah and focused on their deeds but for a believer he didn't focus on the believer's deeds he focused on Allah's payment why? so the believer doesn't become impressed with their deeds they don't start thinking it's because of my deeds I'm gonna get Jannah no you're gonna get Jannah because of Al Husna or, or with, with you're gonna be compensated those who did their best will be compensated with the very with the ultimate best look at the transition now let's understand this last part الَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا بِالْحُسْنَى my best is that perfect? your best is that perfect? far from it far from it our best is pretty lame but it's still our best Allah does not say I will give you according to because your best was like 60% so I'm going to give you reward based on 60% Al-Husna in Arabic actually is the superlative form it actually means the ultimate best the absolute best was my effort absolutely the best? no it was imperfect because my best is imperfect but Allah's reward based on my imperfect effort is actually ultimately the most beautiful this is the same word that's used for Allah's names it's the description of something nothing can be more beautiful is what's called al husna nothing can be more beautiful inside and out is called al husna Allah is saying I will give you in Jannah something that will look beautiful on the outside and you will feel beautiful on the inside and it will never you have never seen more beauty on the outside and have you have never felt this beautiful on the inside that is al husna and that's what I'm willing to give you you just give me your best you know what Allah is showing us? Allah is showing us the sinners are going to be punished exactly based on their deeds but the doers of good are being given way more than they could ever earn way more than that now let's think about this inside and outside beauty before we conclude if, we, if I'm in a beautiful place but I'm depressed does the place look beautiful? you could be in a 5 star hotel they're giving you the best food everything's amazing and you're like I don't know why nothing means anything I'm not hungry I don't want to go and can we go back home? because there's beauty on the outside but there are feelings of ugliness on the inside that's not al-husna there are people who try to find goodness on the inside and there, I've met people that have a lot of happiness on the inside and they have practically nothing outside they have nothing outside but that doesn't mean their life is easy there's still the ugliness of the outside to deal with disease, sickness, poverty, hunger they have to deal with those things those are ugly things but at least they have a lot more beauty on the inside Allah is offering us a Jannah where it's the ultimate beauty on both ends it's beyond imagine we can't imagine this. this it's not something we've ever experienced we can't and he says this is what he's going to do why? because he owns whatever's in the skies and whatever's in the earth I'm going to give you a taste of tomorrow 
similar, just a taste. And I can't go into the whole thing because I don't want to do injustice to the Aya. We have a little bit of time, so I'm going to use it. Those who do their best. I mean, I expect that they're people of Tahajjud. I expect that these are people that are doing at least one Umrah a year. Multiple Hajjages. Donate a lot of money. Right? They're at the Masjid every day. You know, five times a day or at least Fajr and Isha every day. These are people that are like doing dhikr all the time. They're like, they're just spiritual high standard. These are people of Ihsan. These are people of Ihsan. This ayah 32 is a description of the people that will get the very best Jannah. Al Husna. Al Husna means they can't be any beautiful, any more beautiful than that. These are the people who get it. I'm going to just translate it for you so you appreciate what he's saying. The people who are able to stay away from and avoid major sins and all kinds of indecency and ugliness. In the lamam, except slip ups, except the occasional slip ups, except messing up here and there. In the no doubt about it, your master is very vast in forgiveness. He knows better about you when he brought you up from the earth. And he knows you better. He, he's known you better when you were in the bellies of your mothers hidden away. So don't consider yourselves pure. He knows better who has taqwa. That's the ayah. This ayah needs an hour. Well, I would just, you just need to appreciate what's happened here. The previous ayah was people who do ihsan. The people of ihsan should be described now with the best deeds. What are the best deeds? They don't mess up in a major way. They, they don't kill anybody. They don't, they don't eat haram. They don't commit major sins. And they do mess up sometimes. Like illa lama, they do mess up sometimes. Not major sins, but you know, stuff happens. They get angry sometimes. They ended up backbiting somebody here and there. They they look somewhere they shouldn't have looked. They had a conversation they shouldn't have. They 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 do make mistakes. And I'm telling you something. I know there are kids here. So I won't go into detail. Classical mufassirun, when they explain this ayah, slip ups. PG thirteen, maybe even R. They were, and now you're like, is this the seed of Quran from the Sahaba? From what? Is this from? Does anybody else know this? Is Ibn, Ibn, Ibn Kathir? Like when I opened and start reading, and I'm like, I better not read this out loud. <laughs> they actually started going into detail. What is the slip up? And the slip ups are a bunch of astaghfirullahs. I'm telling you, there are a bunch of astaghfirullahs. Why are they there? Why are these people saying this? Why are they so liberal? I thought Islam is conservative. Because you know, we have a black and white world, right? Liberal, conservative. And if you're a good Muslim, you're supposed to be a conservative. And if you're going to Jahannam, you're supposed to be a liberal. The problem is, the Quran is neither liberal nor conservative. The Quran is balanced. And it's ca it came to human beings. And human beings aren't perfect. And they mess up. And just because they mess up, Allah doesn't take their hope away. You can't do your best. You messed up. You can't be a person of Ihsan. Look at what you did. No, Allah doesn't cancel people. Allah says, okay, they, they do their best. They, they stay away from major things and then they mess up too. And when they mess up, they, it's not a permanent mess up. It's momentary. They mess up and then, and then he immediately adds, Allah is, your, your Rabb is so vast in forgiveness. Your Rabb is so vast in forgiveness. You know what that means? We claim that religion is merciless. Religion is harsh. Religion is judgmental. You know what's happened today? Because we want to run away from religion, human beings have become more judgmental than ever before. Allah is vast in forgiveness. Human beings have become extremely narrow in forgiveness because they're away from Allah. You know what you have now? Millions of videos. How to deal with a narcissist. How to deal with a toxic person. If you have a toxic spouse, watch this. 
If you have a toxic mother, watch this. Oh my God, my mother's toxic. My cousin's toxic. My brother's toxic. My husband's toxic. My wife is toxic. My God, I live in a toxic waste dump. I put a put a hazmat suit on. Everybody around me is toxic. And all those toxic people are watching the same toxic video and calling you toxic. Isn't that the world we live in now? And by the way, once you call someone, once you declare someone is a narcissist, someone is toxic, you know what that means, right? Is that like a this week they're toxic or they're forever toxic? Oh, that's a toxic person. That means they're going to die toxic. They're going to die a narcissist. They're going to die this. Once you put a label on them, once you put a sin on them, once you put a mistake on them, once you put a label on them, they must wear that label like their own skin. They have to become this now. And we call this liberation. This is liberation. And religion is oppressive. Do you see the hypocrisy and the irony? What is Allah just saying? What is Allah saying? Allah is saying, people who, like the best people are people who accomplish this amazing thing. What's this amazing thing? They stayed away from major sins. That's it. Can, can, like they didn't like pray all night and fast every Monday and Thursday. And they didn't like do Umrah every, they, they didn't, like they didn't quit all their friends. They didn't just cry all the time. They didn't, they didn't do any of that. They just, they just stayed away from major sins. Then what? Then what? Oh yeah, they messed up a little bit. Huh? Wait, that doesn't sound like Ihsan. That sounds like they're, they, they're, they did something toxic. They're just, they messed up. How can you, you, they can't be part of this ayah. Yeah, you didn't decide this, Allah. And he says, well, I, I'm not that forgiving. Yeah, you're not that forgiving. Inna rabbaka wasi'al mawfirah. Your rub is vast in forgiveness. Which is an interesting indication that you're not vast in forgiveness. This religion came to open the doors of Rahmah for people. There are people in your family you've had an argument with, they messed up, they said something, stuff happened. It's hard for you to let go. It's hard. Some people are so hard on, it's hard pressed on not being able to forgive. You know what they do? They say dramatic things about Judgment Day. Allah will ask you on Judgment Day. I will tell Allah about this on Judgment Day. I love that. I love that, 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 that line. Allah will ask you on judgment day because Allah told you what He's going to ask on judgment day. And when judgment day begins and every creation is quiet, He's going to give you a passport. You're going to say, Ya Allah, before the proceedings begin, my cousin, last Eid, ask him about what he said. That's how you think judgment day is going to work. The audacity with which we speak about who Allah will punish and what He will question so far from what Allah says. So, so far from what Allah says. Here we are looking for the Rahmah from Allah, begging for the Rahmah from Allah, and we have no room for Rahmah for each other. It's, it's incredible. And Allah is describing this, and the Sahaba were like, you know, there's there's uh, one ayah in Surah uh, Al-An'am, Allah describes believers. He says, those who believed and never corrupted their faith with doing anything wrong. With doing anything wrong. And the Sahaba were like, we're done. Nobody's going to heaven. Because the ayah says, they believed and they never corrupted their faith with anything wrong. How many? They're all human. They've done plenty of things wrong. What are, what's going to happen? They, they went to the Prophet and said, All of us doesn't wrong themselves. No, Allah is saying, Bulm here means shirk. They didn't do something majorly bad. The ultimate bulm. In the bulm, in the shirk of bulm That's what Allah is saying here. The Prophet explained and the Sahaba are like, and so are the rest of us. Like, oh, okay. You know what? I, I've been trying to study Quran for 20 something years. I'll tell you something. The khutbahs that I've heard in my in my youth and my and the, the talks and the the literature that I've read, it made me feel for a long time that chances are I'm going to hell. And so are most of you. Chances are. Because we're not gonna make it. We're just not good enough. 
And the reason that's happened is because we're constantly compared to people that were amazing. So, and clearly I'm no Abu Bakr, you're no Umar, you're no Fatima, you're no Aisha. So we're basically meant for, for the grand barbecue. That's, uh, <laughs> and then the khutbahs that I heard all these years, the thing that kept getting repeated is all the amazing people already died. And now we just have you. <laughs> I don't know if you've heard all of this, but I certainly did. Over and over again. You know how you say Kinaya, you're saying it without saying it? There's a lot of saying this without saying it. And Allah is angry with this person. And Allah will punish this. And Allah will get you for this. And look at what the Muslims are doing here. Allah will punish, Allah will punish, Allah will punish. Look at this haram, look at this haram, look at this haram. And yep, Allah is gonna punish. I don't think I'm gonna make it. This looks pretty bad. And they got a lot of dalil too. They, got, they quote a lot of ayat and the hadith. And when they get to the ayat of like Jahannam, then the volume goes up. You ever notice that the volume goes up whenever they talk about Jahannam? Even the khatib, nicest guy. Then he's about to give a khutbah. What happened to you? You just sent everybody to hell with your voice. I, you know, and then I found something else. So one, one narrative of Islam I found being even studying Islam, a narrative of Islam I found is chances are you're going to that. Then I found a counter narrative, a reaction, a reaction. And to, to every action, there's equal but opposite reaction. The Prophet loves humanity, Allah loves us. We should love ourselves. Allah will forgive. Let's tolerate, let's accept. Let's hold hands. Let's accept the sinner. Let's hug the sinner. Let's hug the sin while we're at it too. Let's, because the deen is rahma. We need to have rahma. Rahma, rahma, rahma. Allah is a rahman. So one extreme was, everybody's going to hell. And then you get an equal but opposite reaction, which is what? Everybody's going to heaven. It's a party. And I have to real, you know what, one thing you will notice, all of these, is ma tahwal anfus. Is van and hawa nafs. I don't say this with a hundred percent guarantee, but I'm a student of psychology. And I've seen men that talk a lot about hellfire and they don't have healthy personal lives. There's a lot going on in their lives and they're very angry about it and it comes out on the mibba. And I'm not joking, this is serious. This is serious. There are women that are teaching halaqat, that are talking about how difficult it is for you to make it into Jannah. And they are very depressed in their personal life. Their emotions have now started polluting, they don't even realize it, it started polluting their understanding of the religion, corrupting it. Now it's not the Quran speaking, it's me making the Qur'an speak what I want to say. I'm using the Qur'an, but I'm actually speaking my own thoughts, my own version. Allah is extremely loving sometimes and extremely scary sometimes. He's both. Allah opens some doors sometimes, but when I said flip ups, Allah will forgive. Some people here got uncomfortable. What is he trying to make everybody liberal? You know why? because your comfort zone is in the conservative. And some people here that may lean towards the liberal dynamic say, finally, someone's speaking my truth. Because you know what that is? That's our own hawa, finding what we find comfort in and not comfort in. But you and I have to learn to surrender to the word of Allah. Like I don't have to concern myself with how you will feel when I share what Allah says, because some of you will be uncomfortable with what Allah says. Some of you are not used to hearing what Allah says. If I start caring about that, then that's my hawa nafs. That's me, yantiqu anil hawa. I'm 
thinking about your feelings before I open my mouth. I can't. Now I shouldn't do this. I should talk about something else. If I'm going to talk about the Quran, then I have to be as honest with the Quran as possible. And I don't have to, I, I can't concern myself with your emotions and your comfort zones. When Allah opens the door for forgiveness, He opens the door for forgiveness. When He gives room for some, for, for people to slip up and slip ups happen, everybody's human. People mess up. All of us have embarrassing things we've done. All of us. But we're not beyond redemption. In the eyes of people, He cannot be redeemed. And just because people, and people will come and tell you, Allah will never forgive you. You know that? Allah will never forgive you. Really? Allah sent you an email? Where did you, where did you get the notification from Allah that He will not forgive you? Where did you get it? What? Allah is not one to tell you about the unseen. Where did you get it from? Allah said in the previous ayah, You know, Khalid ibn Walid is the reason 70 Sahaba were killed. You know that, right? Khalid ibn Walid, 70 Sahaba at Uhud. The Prophet was almost killed. The Prophet bled in three places in his face. There's a spear going through the Prophet's mouth in Uhud. Because of who? Khalid ibn Walid. And there are people praying next to Khalid ibn Walid and he's the reason their family members are dead. And sometimes he leads them in prayer too. You know that, right? And they don't look at him and get traumatized because they have something inside them. They understand, Inna Rabbaka They don't say, I can't forget what you did. I know that you're a great general, but your great generalness really hurt us that time. I don't want, I don't want you to ever forget what you have done. What? We, we read these stories, we read this history, we read this Quran, but then we put it on pause and then we live our life. Different standards. This is what we have to change. This is what we have to change. Ihsan is defined, and this is where I'm going to conclude today. Ihsan is defined a certain way in the Muslim community. Ihsan means someone who looks a certain way, they talk a certain way, they have a certain amount of knowledge, they have a certain amount of practice. It's, a, it's an outwardly thing. Ihsan. And Ihsan in the Quran is much more attainable. It's much more realistic. How do you become a okay, I'm a Muslim. How do you become a Muhsin? I'm a Muslim, I've made some mistakes, I've made some sins. How do I become a Muhsin? Okay, stay away from major sins. Now you mess up sometimes, just pick yourself up, get back up on the horse, keep moving. Don't don't get addicted to sin. Don't stick on the same sin. But even along the way, you'll mess up here and there. It'll happen. It's okay. As what I'll leave you with is where we last section. What was the last section mostly about? The one before this one. You know? Remember? Angels? Daughters of God? People put angels and daughters of God between themselves and God. Why? Because they say, God's going to be angry at me. I need someone who will forgive, who will put in a good word. Right? And in this next section, Allah says, Why do you need anyone? You can mess up, I'll forgive you. You're not beyond redemption with me. And you know what? If I, if you spent a long time with me, and then I was in trouble, then you'd come and defend me and say, No, 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 I know him personally. I know he messed up here and there. But he's not like that. Because the one who knows you most can defend you the best. You understand? So the angel that has lived his whole life here and here knows you really well, right? And what does Allah say in this ayah? He knows you better. You are going to use the angel to go make a case to Allah and say, Ya Allah, I know this one. I've been with him my whole life. He's a good person. Allah says, He knows you better. When you brought me out from the earth. When you were buried deep inside the womb of your mother, your mother didn't even know you. I knew you. You're going to tell me somebody else knows you better. Somebody else is going to make a case for you. Nobody will make a case for you like I will. I'm the one who forgives. It's so beautiful. The, the, the spiritual way in which he crushes shirk here. Because one of the roles of shirk was, we can't face Allah. He's too scary. We have to put someone in between. And Allah says, why do you need someone in between? 
amazing. It's just absolutely amazing. We're going to unpack. We haven't unpacked anything yet, actually. I just introduced the ayah. We didn't actually go into the ayah. Well, we're going to do this ayah piece by piece. Then 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 in the then 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 it's like eight lectures so I, can, I can't do it in this time I can introduce it though read this ayah yourself before tomorrow contemplate it and we'll discuss it this is the longest ayah of the surah for a reason then he will inform you of what you used to do. That's the that's the last ayah for the day. Separate it. So farra tafiruna minhu. The death you are running from comes from tarfara or iftarra when you show your teeth when you're laughing, and to to when someone moves in a quick fashion when your mouth moves going like ah, 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 like this. That's farra or iftarra. Farfara al ba'ir when a camel shakes its body. Uh, Al-Mafar means a place to flee or run away from. Actually, the wise meaning is not that, that important. A well-fed lamb. Wow, that's a really well-fed lamb. <laughs> I think it's it's called that because it's fur shakes and stuff because it's so fat. But anyway, so the idea of far is something that moves quickly. Like quick running, quick dashing. Uh, escaping also is, is, is farar. Farrat bin qaswara. Right? Donkeys are, mules are there and they see a lion coming and the donkeys run, dash for it. That's the word farra also. Allah says, tell them, say this. No doubt about it, the death which you are running away from. How can somebody run away from death? They're not running away from death. They're running away from the conversation about death. They're running away from the preparation of death. They're running away from facing the fact of death. They're running away from that. Allah says, you can run from that all you want. Then no doubt about it, it is going to meet you. Arabic students will notice here, mudaqikum is a mudaf and mudaf ilayhi. This is an ism fa'il from laqa, which means to meet. In the Arabic language, when an ism fa'il, mudaq, or mudaqi, is used as a mudaf, it means it's already happened. So, إِنَّهُ مُلَاقٍ إِيَّاكُمْ That would mean, it will meet you. مُلَاقِيكُمْ actually means, it's already met you. It's as good as already done. It's guaranteed. You have to think of it as immediate. It's already passed. You know, the difference between he is going to help him as opposed to he is his helper. When you say he's his helper, the help is already done. If I say he's going to teach him, the teaching hasn't happened yet. But if I say he's his teacher, the teaching is already happening. It is your meter. Not going to meet you. It literally says meter, but it, it, what's meant to say is it's going to meet you. But the language used is it's consider it done. Consider it already done. That's how immediate we should be thinking about death. Then he says, Let's look at Lakia also. Lakia actually means something that's that's thrown in your path. And laqa yulaki means to meet someone, to come into contact with someone. Uh ilqa, like you know, Musa salam was told to throw the staff. That was alqiha ya Musa. So ilqa was used for that uh, for that purpose. So uh laqa means when you just stumble upon somebody, you run into somebody. This is why enemy forces when they clash against each other, that's actually called talaqi. Also. Or iltiqa actually. In Surah Ali Imran, when the Muslims and the enemies met on the Battle of Badr, that was fi'atayn iltaqata. Right? And similarly, when, when uh, the oceans collapse into each other, maraj al bahraini yaltaqiyan, from the same origin, when they crash into each other. So, the same way, death will come crashing towards you. It'll just run right into you, bump right into you. It's not going to come with like a four meeting or four warning. It's just going to show up. Then you will be returned. Now let's focus on the word returned. Ridda is the shortening of the chin when you when you pull your face backwards. And radid is a, whatever organ is shrinking. Radad is a camel that drinks water, meaning it pulls back its udders. Now, 
the, the, the important thing is Rudud wa Darahim. Basically, if you give somebody fake money and they give it back to you, that's not real money. Those are not real euros. Like you just drew an E on there and gave it to me. Then that's Mardud. It's rejected because it's not of any value. So there's the Arabic word for returning and there's returning when you have no value. Return because it's faulty. Like when you re somebody ships you a product. I don't know, you guys get Amazon here? You got Amazon? Okay, you got Amazon. Because some countries don't get Amazon. I'm so surprised. Anyway, it's the Tajad. It's every, it should be everywhere. Okay, anyway. So, <laughs> I know, yeah, my weird humor. Anyway, so you get, you get a faulty product on Amazon and you return it because it's faulty. That product would be Mardud. That would be Mardud. That's, a, that's Rad. Okay. Allah says you will be returned, meaning you are going to be returned in a faulty state. These people are being told you're faulty. If it was just a normal return, it would be thumma turja'oon. Thumma turja'oon. Or ta'udun. Or, or tu'a, you know, so there would be different words that were, or tu'adun actually. But here, turaddun means you are going to be returned back as faulty as you are. Meaning you're not going to come to Allah pure. You're going to come to Allah impure. And that's inside the word rat, you know. Now, you will be returned to the knower of the unseen and the seen. Why is it important for Allah to say the knower of the unseen and the seen instead of just saying you will be returned to Allah? Make sense? Allah chose to say you will be returned to the one who knows the unseen and the seen. What does that have to do with this conversation? What it has to do with is people that look religious on the outside but don't actually have faith on the inside affecting their hearts. And when we go back to Allah, how religious I looked on the outside, how religious I sounded on the outside, how religious I practiced on the outside, that's all shahada. Shahada means you can see it. You can see somebody praying. You can see somebody giving a lecture. You can see somebody reciting Quran. You can see somebody dressed religiously. You can see that. But what you cannot see is what? Somebody may be worshipping Allah in the scene, but running away from death in their hearts. 